29, a 2.50 liter volume of hydrogen measured at negative 196 degrees Celsius is warmed to 100 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume of the gas at the higher temperature, assuming there's no change in the pressure. Okie dokie. So with gases and this chapter, the hardest part is figuring out which equation is the one you're going to use. So the, the easiest way to figure that out, all we have to do is just list what they gave us. So they told us that we had a 2.50 liter volume at this temperature. So it seems like this volume goes with this temperature. So I'm going to group them together. I'm going to say that they gave me a volume and that was at 2.50 liters. And they told me that the temperature that went with it was negative 196 degrees Celsius. But now all of a sudden, what did we do? Well, we warmed that volume. And now the new temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. If you have like two temperature values or two volumes or whatever, just write them next to each other, but they're different sets. So this was set number one. Now I'm just going to say that I have a new set and now the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And if we just read more, it says calculate that volume of the gas at the higher temperature. So it seems like I need to find out the volume. From this, we can basically answer the question as to what is the best formula. When you have sets of variables, so when you have two Vs in this case, and we have two T values, you're going straight for the combined gas law, which is this one. Now this is the general formula of it, the biggest formula, but the best thing about the combined gas law is that you can manipulate this to the formula that you, that you specifically need. So for example, we read this question and they didn't give me any numbers for N, which is number of moles. If they didn't say anything about number of moles, get rid of the variable and get rid of it on both sides. So now the bottom is just going to be divided by a T value, AKA a temperature. Now they did say that there was no change in pressure and P stands for pressure. If there's no change, these numbers are not changing and there's no difference. So you know what that means, get rid of it. <laughs> there you go. And now we have a, an easier formula to work with. In this case, we're just doing V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now it does not matter which set you call one or two. Absolutely doesn't matter. The only thing that is important is that these are grouped together as the ones or twos, and these are grouped as the other number. You can't group this volume with this temperature. They don't go together. I hope that makes sense. So since this is on the left-hand side, I'm gonna say that these are the ones, so V1, T1, and then these are my twos, V2, T2. Now all we have to do is just plug it in, but there's one rule to the game. The only rule that we have to use in this formula is that the temperature, so I'm just going to say T, has to be, T has to be, in Kelvin. Cannot be in Celsius. Reason being is that Celsius values have negatives, and that's going to throw off the, the numbers in our formula. Kelvins have no negatives, so that's why we just have to convert it. So I have to convert this value into Kelvin, and I have to convert the other temperature into Kelvin. How do I convert from Celsius to Kelvin? Well, generally, it's always just adding 273. Now, if you want, you could add 273.15. That would give you a more specific answer, but in this case, the difference is so small that you're going to get roughly the same answer at the end anyway. So let's figure out these temperatures in Kelvin. So negative 196 plus 273, I get 77 Kelvin for T1. So this will be 373 Kelvin. Okay. So now let's just plug them in, right? So V1 and T1, V2 and T2. So let's go for it. So I got 2.50 divided by 77. And this all equals 
my V2, which, which we're trying to figure out. So I'm just going to say X and then it's over 373. When I do, uh, the actual work in my formula, I don't like to write any units. I always like to just double check just to make sure I have the right units. And then I just plug in the numbers. Seems like cross multiplication for me, pretty simple enough, right? So we got 77 times X and this equals 2.5 times 373. So let's see, 373 times 2.5, I get 932.5 and then just divide by the 77 and let's see what we get. So divide by 77, I get uh, sig figs, no one cares, but your teacher or professor may. So I'm gonna do three sig figs, so 12.1, but me personally, I don't care. <laughs> But anyway, so we get 12.1 and just go back to just make you have the right unit, right? We're looking for the volume. So look back to the other volume to see what unit we're giving it in. In this case, it was liters. So this has to be in liters and that's the answer. So it would be 12.1 liters and that's the volume. And there you go. So thank you so much. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 15,000 subs, and that's all because of you guys. So my brother and I, we really do appreciate you all. And I am so glad that, you know, we're able to help you out in your classes, not only for chem, but we also got physics and math videos on the channel at the moment. So go check it out. All right. Hope to see you in later lessons and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.